please keep an eye out for future videos. I have a pretty exciting announcement. Um, if we can get to 15,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I'm going to give away a layout. Um, up to $5,000 in value. I will help you design it. I will build it. And all you have to pay for is delivery. Now what this means is it can be a pretty good size layout and it's entirely designed by you and then built by me on this channel. So if you're interested in something like that or if you have a friend that might be interested, subscribe. If I can get to 15,000 subscribers, that's how I'm going to pay for it, guys. Um, I will give away a layout on this channel and I will take you along for the entire ride design, build, delivery, and installation if you're local to Florida. With that said, enjoy today's video and we'll see you around. I'm kind of excited we finally got it on legs. So I'm gonna be able to get underneath it. I'll be, I'll take you along so you can see what I'm doing to support all of this stuff. Um, I gotta put in a little piece of plywood up here in the back corner so we can uh, you know, get that last loop completed. And then we also need to wire, secure the track, and we need to make a switch panel. And the switch panel is probably gonna be a separate video. I usually do a separate video for those. And I'm actually gonna make it in a totally different way from the way I've made it before, so keep an eye out for that video. So what we're gonna get started with today is I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure all of the track is where it belongs and I'm gonna draw a pencil line around it so I know where about I need to drill holes for wires, for feeders, where I need to install um, gaps so I can isolate track sections. And then I also need to put in that piece of plywood in the back corner so I can finish off that last loop. So what I failed to explain in the last segment and what you're going to see me doing here in this quick little one is I've realized that this center section is sitting a little tall and if I can get it down a little bit that'll lessen the grade on the down ramp and make things look a little better. So what I'm doing is I'm just penciling in a line on where I think I can safely cut the bench work in order to drop that center section about an inch if I recall. Um, also on this front edge here, what I'm doing there is I'm realizing that if you're going to put scenery in here, you're probably going to cut that edge back a little bit so it's not a vertical drop. You want a little bit of a hill there. So I'm actually just marking a loose line back a couple of inches, uh, depending on the area. Um, so when you do go to put scenery in it, it's going to look better and it's going to be a little easier to, to do. Now I've gotten all of the track marked. Um, I went ahead and marked spots where I'm going to put the uh, isolators and then everywhere that I'm going to put in a drop. And the arrow indicates which side I'm actually gonna drill it on. So I know I wanna drill it over here. Um, this one I wanna drill this way because there's a switch here and underneath the switches there isn't any room, but underneath the rest of the track there is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up here. You saw me vacuum, you saw me make some marks as to where all of these cut marks are on the plywood. So when I start putting in the actual risers, I can set them in the right place and know that I'm not gonna interfere with other things. So I went ahead and cut a piece of plywood here and what this is, is this is just a remake of what the top area is here um, at the cut marks so I can fill in this little corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this secured. And then I've just got a piece of scrap. It's a chunk of half inch. And I'll splice this together down here. We know we wanted it four and seven eighths roughly because that's what it is up here. So this particular spot, four and seven eighths. So I know I'm gonna be four and seven eighths here. And get it over there. Perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark this here with my pencil. So if it does move, I can put it back. And then I'm gonna drive a couple screws. 
Now keep in mind when you are doing this, you most likely want to put some glue in there. I'm not putting glue in right now because in the event I do need to change it for any reason, I want that ability. Plus four screws on either side of this joint is going to be more than adequate, I would think. So once these screws are in on the underside, I will actually go ahead and take a grinder or a sander or something and I will grind off the tips if they're sticking out. Uh, this is just a safety precaution to make sure that people don't poke themselves when they are uh, you know, working on the layout. Now I'm going to go ahead and put another splice in over here as well just to hold these two together. So I mean they're fairly rigid on this side because this is the benchwork framing but we want this to not move as well so I'll make a little square and stick that in there as well. We have one piece of plywood plus a piece of scrap and keep in mind that this is a seven foot long table so I could have actually used the scrap from the cutoff, the one foot cutoff, to fill this in. It would just have, would have had to been two pieces. The next up is risers and this layout is going to be a little unique in that the center area is actually going to be flat and I know I want it to be two and a half inches up. So this back area here is actually going to be three and a half inches between the benchwork framing and the underside of the upper layer. And then I'm going to go two and a half here. So I'm just going to cut a piece of plywood that's two and a half inches tall for the center area. I know I got the three and a half inch here. And then we'll start splitting the difference on all the other ones. So the easiest way to measure these is I just grab the saw mark, I hook it, and I know this one is going to be 21 inches. So I'm actually going to cut it 20. So that holds it back a half inch on either side. So if I have to trim it a little bit, I can. And then back here, since I do have that piece of plywood down here, it actually needs to be a half inch less. So I know I need three inches here. Now keep in mind that I'm building this for um, older standards. So the trains are going to be a little bit shorter. Um, we're not worried about um, intermodal cars or anything like that. So a little lower on the clearance is okay. Okay, so I've got the first round of risers um, cut to length. And keep in mind that these are actually going to be going on top of the benchwork framing or on top of the plywood. So this is a little different than how I normally, um, or how you've seen me do it in the past in videos. So I've gone ahead and I've already put crack holes in all of these. So they will get installed on top and the screws will just go down uh, to secure them in place. And then I'll just secure the plywood to the top as per normal through with, with drywall screws. Okay, so I just got the risers connected. Um, the back ones over here where the little tunnel is, I've got these secured so they're nice and flush. The idea being here is you're going to cover all of this with fascia, but you want to be able to get in there if a train derails. And then I've got the little two and a half inch ones secured as well give you an idea what these look like from the bottom you know they just secured with pocket screws into the top of the benchwork framing and then secured with essentially drywall screws from the top so now we know that this plane here is is perfectly flat we know this is flat so we maintain our clearance underneath and then we got a little bit of a grade down to this level area here it flattens out for those switches and then it grades down again to go underneath okay, so i wanted to show you a quick and dirty trick real quick. three and a half inches to the bottom of the plywood and zero over there so if you take three and a half and you divide it by two we get uh, 1.75 so one and three quarters and i know the length from here down to zero level is 10 feet. So if I just measure five feet, which is there, so roughly the center of this curve here, I know at this point, I should be at 1.75 inches on my grade. So I know I need to cut a piece of plywood that will fit for that particular spot that is one and three quarters of an inch tall. 
and that will make sure that my grade is consistent all the way through this entire rise. Now, if you're building a larger railroad, this rule still applies, but it does get a little more complicated, especially when there's lots of curves involved. For this layout being as simple as it is, we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna tab the distance, which halves the height. And once we get this height set here, we can put the risers in between on either side and have this all very well secured. Okay, so again, like in previous videos, I've got my lower edge set here. And then I've got my high point on the far end. So what I've done is I've taken a straight edge. In this case, I've taken my three foot level. You can use a piece of two by four or a piece of plywood, whatever you like. But the important thing is that it is clamped in place so it stays nice and flat because plywood while it is a very rigid structure it does have a habit of being a little bit wavy so like i've done in previous videos i've just cut a bunch of random blocks they're all roughly the same length they're a little different here or there so i'm just going to go ahead and stick those against the the benchwork framing bump it up to the bottom of the plywood here. Um, keeping in mind that I know it's, it's going to flex a little bit into position. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just secure with screws. So I've just bumped the block up to the bottom of the plywood here. In this case, it's just a hair shorter than the bottom of the benchwork frame. So that works out really well. I don't have to trim it later on. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and install the four screws. Now the beauty of this system is you don't have to go up top and secure this to move on to the next one. You can just install the next one right away. Okay, so that takes care of the bottom end. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove my straight edge here. I don't need it anymore. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws in each of the risers. And this is the same process for the entire layout. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details. I'm just gonna get it done and we'll cut to when I'm done. Okay, so now we're back at it. We're gonna start drilling some holes. I got a little quarter inch drill bit here and put it on my impact driver. Just my preference, doesn't really matter either way. So we've got a bunch of marks. We know where to drill our holes. So here we know this is just gonna be an isolation point. So we're gonna break this layout up into a couple sections to isolate areas. So if we do have a problem, we can find it a little easier. Um, so for example, here I've got a pencil mark here and then I've got an arrow that way. So I know there is a track joint here and I know I wanna drill the hole just a little bit past it. I, use, uh, I like to go three quarters of an inch to an inch uh, back and I usually just put it in the center because that's the easiest spot. So one hole down and a bunch more to For example, this one here, I know it needs to go on this side instead. You'll also notice and remember that I marked where the wires are for the switches. Now, the thing to remember with the switches is the wire does come out the side, but there's also a little bit of a cutout in the bottom, and I'll put a picture in here for you. Um, so what you actually want to do is find the line edge of the track and actually drill a hole next to it. So rather than drilling outside of the track, you're actually going to drill underneath the track, but along the edge. Okay, now this one down here, I know I have a module um, cross member right here, but because I know these track segments are about 10 inches long, I can actually go a couple inches back. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So the three holes are in line. It, it's just something you develop over time. It makes it easier to wire um, once you start getting underneath the layout. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. If you like, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment down below. Your questions and comments below actually help me figure out what you want to watch next. Thanks for watching.